Well, I'm delighted to be here today to present to you about one of my favourite topics, which is um, holy wells. And the title of today's lecture is Customs and Cures Sligo's Holy Wells. So to start with, we're going to look at um, one of my favourite holy wells. This is St. Colum Kill's Holy Well here in Dunearan. Um, you can see the beautiful backdrop of um, ben Bulban, and we're in Drumcliff Estuary here. So this well is actually covered by the tide and is only visible at low tide. It's visited on St. Colum Kill's Day on the 9th of June. And I'm going to come back to that in a little while and tell you a bit more. But this is just one of our very unique and interesting wells we have here in Sligo. And we have so many of them. Um, and they are often places of great antiquity and steeped in legend and folklore. Holy wells can be found at many locations, down boreens, up mountains and bogs, by the seashore, as that one illustrated, and even in our towns and villages. And these diverse and enigmatic sites are symbols of Irish culture, embedded in the natural landscape, communal places for used for a personal devotion, prayer and healing. Um, there are 3,000 holy wells recorded in Ireland and in Sligo we have 117 of those uh, recorded on the Archaeological Survey of Ireland. In South Sligo alone we have 69 holy wells which were recorded there and that is on the official inventory, the Archaeological Inventory for South Sligo. We have many of these wells that are still frequented with active devotion still taking place. But we also have many more that are no longer in use with the customs and even the original location of these forgotten. As part of the Sligo Archaeology, Community Archaeology Project in 2019, we launched uh, an online survey to collect information from the public regarding um, some of these lost or um, some of these lost locations or some of the customs that are missing um, and to see if people had any information that they would like to share with us. Um, so some of the questions in the survey uh, are as follows. Are there customs, rounds or traditions, stories or cures associated with your local well? Do you know what day the well was visited? What prayers were said there? Were there offerings left, left at the well, a stone or nearby tree? So we were delighted to receive many submissions and a lot of that information is included in the wells here. I'm going to recount uh, a number of stories that we collected as part of the survey. So I want to just thank everybody who did send us information on these, these unique and treasured places um, that are a very important part of Sligo's heritage. So I'll just talk about um, wells in general, but I'm going to use uh, some examples, all examples from, from Sligo where I can. And this is Tubber Porig and it's in Ocris Head. And you can see that this one here has got a concrete surround around it. Um, it's very much neglected and trampled by cattle. Um, there's no longer any information about this well, so we don't know what customs took place or anything like that. And this modern surround probably just covered a, a little spring or something that, that emerged from the ground here. So and then we move on to another, a different type of well here in Kiltura, where we have, um, this one has, has many features with it. It's got a cross inscribed stone, it's got a millstone, it's got various commemorative stones around the perimeter of it. And then this one is actually built into a stepped barrow of Bronze Age date. And the barrow itself has became part of the pilgrimage where the hawthorn trees growing in the barrow um, were stopping points at which people um, stopped during the, the pilgrimage. So this, this pilgrimage is no longer active. Um, and then we have another one here, Kingstone Holy Well in Cache. And you can see this one is very much cared for by the community and that it's, it's a very natural setting for a well, this beautiful stone surround and the pool here. But you can see that, you know, it's adorned with a statue and you can see that there's rosary beads. So this is to illustrate, you know, that this well is very much active uh, by comparison to Tubber Podrick there. But all the information collected about all of these wells is so important to us because um, it will be lost from living memory and um, that's why the survey was conducted. Just to note, Kingstone Well is one of the wells that's visited on a Sunday. Um, wells with the name Downock or King in, in the name are usually visited on a Sunday. Um, amongst the popular days for visiting Holy Wells, we have the Feast of the Assumption, which is the 15th of August, St. Patrick's Day, on um, 17th of March and Garland Sunday which is the last Sunday in July. Um, so these are very common dates for visiting wells. And you can see here rounds taking place at St. Patrick's Well in Bunduff, um, it's on the border between Sligo and, and Leitrim and this uh, visit to this well had been inactive for some time and um, the locals decided to start the ritual again and it was a privilege to be present while people were performing the, the rituals and drinking from the well. 
So the actual detailed ritual of, of rounding, it's called rounding or a tourist or a pattern. It was performed um, usually to obtain a blessing or a cure. Um, there is varying degrees of this. Sometimes uh, pilgrims would fast or would keep an overnight vigil at the well. Um, sometimes rounds are performed barefoot or on bare knees while reciting special prayers. Um, generally speaking, the rounds are performed sunwise or deshal, and to do the opposite is considered uh, to invoke a curse. So it's important to do, do it the, correctly, uh, which is, is clockwise. Um, circuits are usually performed in multiples of three or threes. And seven is quite a common number as well for rounding. Um, prayers are counted out in rosary beads and sometimes counted on small stones, uh, which are then placed on a penitential cairn. So this is generally what takes place. Um, the well water is also consumed. Um, and this can be, on each round, the water can be drank or can be um, consumed on the final round. Um, Sometimes moss or watercress or some other plants um, growing at the well were taken away and then used um, for, for curative purposes afterwards. And as part of the rituals, people would leave um, an offering at the well, maybe on top of the well or near it, or hang a rag on a rag tree, which I'll come back to shortly. Um, in the, uh, up into the 19th century, the religious devotions uh, took place at the wells, and these were followed by a pattern day. So the pattern day was a bit like a public holiday, and there were games and sports and dancing and stalls. Um, so all, all, all in all, a, a great occasion to meet your neighbours and interact. But on these occasions also, the, there was um, uh, alcohol consumed, and so this led to drunkenness and there was faction fighting as well. Um, and the Catholic Church ruled um, to suppress all of these um, these pattern days, and quite a number of them were su successfully suppressed during that time. The Great Famine and the decline of Ireland's rural population further impacted on the tradition of visiting um, holy wells and other traditions such as the wake. But we can see here from this example at um, at Bundoff that you know there is an interest in in reviving some of these traditions and. Um, the cup here is at uh, St. Patrick's Well in Dromard, and the other cup is at Kingstone. And these cups are always there for people to drink the water from. And this is the, the well at Bunduff. There's two wells there, as a matter of fact. There's Shaver's Well, and it said that uh, St. Patrick and his companions shaved here. And then there's a second well uh, dedicated to St. Patrick. So it's a stunning location for a well. Offerings. Offerings are often left. Um, sometimes they're of no real monetary value. Um, they could be a button or perhaps a pin, and the pin may represent the pain that's been suffered by the pilgrim, and uh, that is why they're at the well seeking a cure. Sometimes you find crutches, so this indicates a cure that was sought by the pilgrim. And then oftentimes there might be things that will no longer be visible after a while, um, flowers or food. And then later we see what we have here in this, this collection at St. Attract as well, and St. Alva's Grave and Derisala, we have um, crosses, scapulars, rosary beads, and uh, other, other religious items. So this is really, you know, this forms the archeology span of the site, and this can tell us whether or not a site has been active. Um, and if there's coins, it's also useful too, because we can see the dates on those. And sometimes a coin gets thrown in the well, and that was the custom before collection boxes were set up at Holy Wells. Sometimes you see things like a lighter, which may be there to help someone quit smoking, or a pen to bless someone during exams. So it's always um, very interesting to see what offerings are left at Holy Wells. Now, the rag trees. I mentioned earlier that rag trees are also a custom. Uh, we have a few of those in Sligo. This one here is at St. Kieran's Holy Well in Kel Mactai. And these are two bibs, in fact, uh, baby's bibs that have been pinned to the tree. So presumably somebody was looking for a blessing or a healing at this well. Um, rag trees are commonly the ash or the holly tree, and sometimes a white thorn bush or, or a tree that grows near the holy well. Rags were hung on the tree and sometimes were later removed to be used as cures. And it is said that if a rag, once a rag rotted the, from the tree, the pilgrim's problems would cease. Sometimes people would bring um, a portion of a sick person's uh, bed sheets and hang that on the tree. And this is for somebody who couldn't make the trip to the well. The preferred color for um, these rags was red. And it was said that the color red could resist evil spirits. 
Um, this next one here is a rag tree at Tubber Monine, and you can see um, there's a lot of uh, offerings on this tree, and in particular, there's a lot of men's ties. So this is very curious, and I would love to know why men's ties are, are hanging off this particular one. This is Tubber Alt, um, and a lot of people will know Tubber Alt. It's one of the most uh, famous holy wells in Ireland. If you Google holy well, you will find Tubber Alt uh, without doubt. Um, some people have said that this is not an old tradition at the well, and that really it's something that's begun over the last um, couple of decades. And you can see the amount of um, pilgrims' um, offerings that are left in it, everything from rosary beads to ribbons um hair ties um and even a little baby shoe which you can see on the bottom of the the photograph there um there seems to be a bit of a resurgence in rag trees we can see at crevia kill which is actually um, a neolithic um megalithic tomb that the, that people have started to hang rags there and it seems people want to leave part of themselves behind at these sacred places perhaps for for a blessing of some kind so one of the main reasons, as I said, for visiting holy wells is to seek a cure. And oftentimes conventional medicine wasn't available for people. And, um, and even when it was, the holy wells were still visited for healing. It's said that the best time to visit a holy well for a cure is at midnight on the saint's feast day, when it was said that to be at its most par powerful. And you can he see here in the slide, this is St. Patrick's Well and St. Bridget's Well here. So these are two um, conjoined wells. And it said when wells are conjoined like that, that they actually ha can have the cure for both eyes and ears. So this is an interesting one. And you can see there's a third well outside, just outside the perimeter of those wells there. Um, Dromard, uh, this site is visited on the 29th of July. Uh, of June, excuse me, and uh, runs performed here barefoot and then pilgrims wash their feet in nearby stream afterwards before uh, taking water from the well and then performing stations of the cross at nearby Dromard Church. Some of the most common complaints that people have um, were cured at holy wells, rheumatism, toothache, headache, backache, all these kind of signs of, of, of hardworking people, really. Um, the curving edge of the altar, or the penal altar at Tubborn Altar, set up a cure for backache. And there were holes in that too that you put your fingers into that are said to have been created by St. Patrick in stone. And then you can, uh, you'll get a blessing from doing that. An alt may refer to joint, um, which would refer to the cure, possibly that it would cure joint pain. Um, there's another variation of that, which is gelt which means insane. Um, in Camp in County Kerry, there's a holy well there called Tupper Nagelt, or the well of the insane, and reputedly it cured mental illness. And when the well water was tested, it was revealed that there was lithium in the water. And interestingly, this is a compound which is used in modern medication to treat depression. This is St. Patrick's Well in Ocris, and it's uh, another one of these examples of very well cared for wells. Um, there are often legends associated with um, holy wells of perhaps um, people seeing a legendary fish, uh, usually a salmon, trout or an eel, and these are, when they're seen in the well, is thought to be an omen for the future. At other wells, it's thought to be a bad omen and that you will actually die within the year. So. Um, I'm not sure if it's a good thing to see the fish or not in the well, but people have said that they have actually seen fish, uh, a go golden fish inside in, um, many wells. Wells can often move from one townland to another and they dry up if they've been insulted or misused. Um, an example of misusing um, the well from the water from a holy well is that you um, attempting to boil it, um, that that is actually very insulting to the well, and there are stories of it being disrespected when it has been used for putting making. And I'll, I'll talk you through some of those different stories as we go on. Um, one of an example here from Sligo is around the temple well at Temple Boy in County Sligo, which was filled in by an angry district landlord, Captain King, after he observed the parish people praying around it. The following spring, each of the landlord's mares bore blind foals, and he himself was later shot outside the courthouse in Sligo town. We have many different um, elements that you find at holy wells. The main one is the well water itself, um, usually a natural feature like a tree, and stones. We often find different types of stones, and some of them have a natural 
natural depressions in them and these get imbued with with the legends and stories around them um, being uh, imprints from the saint's knees or feet, hands or elbows, and some are referred to as the saint's pillow. This example here is from St. Patrick's Holy Well in Kilmacune. And um, it said that St. Patrick left his knee prints in this. And this stone has a reddish hue, which people say is from the saint's blood. We get whole stones, ohm stones across Slavs, often found at Holy Wells and in association with them, and they themselves become um, imbued with legends and story. On this example here is the birthing stone from Inish Murray, and it is thought that um, it has helped women ease childbirth, and it said that according to the island's inhabitants, no child died during childbirth on the island. We have some other interesting healing stones in, in Sligo, and this one here is the straining stone in Clary. And there's uh, these water roll stones on top of a large flagstone and then this upright stone and around it you'll find threads tied to it. You can see a few examples here in this photograph. And it's thought that this was a cure for strains or pains or aches in both animals and people. So the idea was that you take a thread from the stone and tie it around your leg or any afflicted limb and then uh, subsequently replace it with a thread for the next person. Um, these are very well known. These are the cursing stones at Inish Murray, or the Klucka Bracca. Um, to invoke a curse, it's said that you turn the stones nine times anti-clockwise. Uh, but you must be very careful in doing this because if it's, the curse is not justifiable, it can rebound on the person turning the stones. We have an interesting holy well on Inish Murray. There's one right outside the castle. And then there's a second one, which is the Well of the Assistants, or Tubernacora. And it was recorded by Wakeman in the 19th century when he visited the island. He said that at times of storms, the natives drained its waters into the ocean, which when accompanied by certain prayers would induce calm waters. So that's interesting use of, of a well, um, not just for healing, but for, you know, to help the, the community. These are examples of bullon stones. Um, you often find bullon stones in association with church sites. Um, and they're often an indication that there was a church site present and they're found at holy wells. They may be fonts, uh, but they also may be early uh, grinding stones for grinding corn or um, other grains into flour. The word bullon is derived from bulla, meaning a bowl. And the hollow in the bullon stone was said to have been used as a saint, by a saint as a pillow. Um, and it's said that water that gathers within a bullon stone is said to uh, be particularly good for curing warts. We have two examples here, this one here on Inish Murray Island and another here on, at St. Mlosh as well in Hamlish. And I think these two are very similar in form. Um, the one at Hamlish has traces of mortar on it, so it may once have been within uh, the fabric of a building, perhaps a church. We see this example here, Keylogue's graveyard. And this one has a hole right through it. And there is a theory that perhaps pilgrims visiting these places would, um, would use another stone and score out the, um, the depression within the bullon. And so eventually it would make a hole right through it. Um, this guy here, um, this is a carved stone head, which is on the pillars um, at the, the gates coming into Kilo's graveyard. And this is said to have a cure as well. It cures toothache. Um, and the way you must do it is you must go and kiss this face at midnight and that will cure your toothache. So now I'm going to talk about uh, just I want to run through and show you some different examples of the, the amazing and varied holy wells that we have here in Sligo. Um, this is St. Bridget's Holy Well in Cliffany. And this one here has a cross inscribed stone um, just standing up right there in front of it. And the little well house to the back of it um, would have once been roofed in a, in a kind of beehive um, house like shape. Patterns here were performed on February the 1st on St. Bridget's Feast Day. And it's recorded that that died out in 1959. You can see a couple of rags there tied to the bush on the side. So people are still visiting the site, which is good to see. Um, the 1st of February marks the pagan festival of Imbolg and the start of spring. Over here we have St. Alba's Holy Well in Derry Sala. 
So this is on the slopes of Kilronan Mountain um, in a bog, and the well is called Tupper Alba, the Holy Well of St. Alba. So there's very variations of that name, Alba, Alva, and Elva. This isolated well was visited on days between the 15th of August and the 8th of September each year. And nearby the well were the remains of a penitential station known as a station house. It's said that if you slept, if you spent a night in this house without sleeping, then you would be cured of any disease. One of the best known holy wells is the Tubernault Holy Well. And this one is uh, said to have been blessed by St. Patrick as he travelled through County Sligo and he converted his followers at this well. You can see this encased in a, a circular stone surround. Um, a lot of the area around it has been landscaped, but it still retains the, the ancient ambience. And it's a beautiful setting in the scenic woodland location close to Loch Gill. Um, there's various different features here. Um, you can see the large altar, the stone altar there. That's a penal altar. And that was the one where you press your back into it to get a cure for, your, for backache. Um, and then on the top of that stone is these little depressions and you dip your finger into those for a blessing. And again, another image there of the uh, Tuberlode um, rag tree. So the, the cure for, um, <coughs> there are many cures associated with the water from Tuberlode and one of those is for a cure for blindness. Um, it's also said that there is a, a supernatural or, or legendary um, trout that lives in the bottom of the well and this trout is said to have a white cross on his back and if you see this this is um it is it's said to be a bad omen and that you will die within the year so that particular fish wouldn't be very welcome i'm sure um Turbernault is associated with the festival of lunasa um it is visited on garland sunday or the last sunday in july and lunasa festival gatherings usually took place at high places um to mark the beginning of the harvest this is one of my favourite wells. This one is in Tullahan Hill. Um, it's known as the Hawks Well or Tullahan Hill Well. And it's in Kulani, high in the Ox Mountains. And this well is a very simple stone lined well with a penitential station beside it there. And the whole thing then is enclosed within this uh, cliff top um, fort or castle. Ger Geraldus Cambrensis writing in the 12th century counted the well amongst the memorabilia Hibernia or the wonders of Ireland. It is said that it exhibited, it can exhibit low and high tides, incredibly despite being on top of a hill. And with this, the water will alternate between seawater and fresh water. And this then affected the taste and it said that it, would be t it could taste bitter or sweet. Legend had that St. Patrick was chasing a devil, one of the last snakes in Ireland through this area when he stopped there thirsty. He prayed for water and a spring surged up from the spot. It is also said the water from this well could not be boiled, and this is a common trait with many wells. And then it is also said that the water can make a person immortal. And this features in Yeats's play, The Hawk's Well, in which an old man spends his life alongside the well, waiting for a sudden and brief splash of water, which will make him immortal. There are two supernatural fish um, associated with this particular well, and that they can be seen at midnight. And the story goes as follows. Once a curious man captured the fish and brought them home to be cooked. He placed them on the gridiron and when he tried to turn the fish over to cook it on the other side, the fish escaped and returned to the well. It is said after that, afterwards when the fish was seen in the well, they bore the marks of the gridiron on one side. Again, Tullahan Hill was a site that was visited in Garland Sunday, or, which is the ancient festival of Lunasa. Um, festivities would take place after visiting the well, after the pattern at the well, uh, they would go to the local strand, which was two miles away for the pattern day festivities. And at this particular one, there was plenty of merrymaking and courting and drinking and faction fighting taking place. And at one such gathering, after visiting the well, the congregation moved to the strand, during which a terrible storm broke out and lasted several days and was taken by the local clergy as a sign by, of God's judgment and disapproval, and as a result, they put an end to the pattern day. Um, the well water, according to local tradition, was made uh, was used to make pochin, and it, and they say that this misuse or misrespect for its sacred waters also contributed to the dying out of the traditions of visiting the well. It's recorded that the last visits took place in the 1930s, um, and the place is unfortunately no longer visited. 
This is saying to tract as well in Clover, um, and many people will know this well. It's, it's right beside the road. Uh, it's very accessible well. It's associated with St. Attracta and it's visited on the Saint's Feast Day, which is August 11th. Uh, folklore has it that St. Attracta killed a serpent at the site of the well. And serpents are thought to symbolize fertility. And what you'll find in the top of the well are these stones, these rounded stones, which are locally known as the serpent's eggs. A woman wishing to have children would bring one of these stones home with her and return it later after giving birth. We see Wakeman's drawing here in the corner, which was done in 1895. Um, and you can see that there's 13 rounded stones there. Uh, a subsequent photograph taken by Kil Kilgallen showed a, a much lesser number. And today we have four stones present, um, which are cemented into the top of the well, so they can't be removed or used for their original purpose. Within the well itself, there's a very large natural boulder, and you can see a bull on into, in that or depression in it. And the water from that was said to cure rickets in children. Saint Attracta had a reputation for charity to the poor and hospitality and a gift for healing. We have another Saint Attracta as well, and there's, um, there's quite a few in Sligo and Mayo. And this one is in Glenawu and Loch Talt. And it's, it's a beautiful well, very well maintained. And it's said here that Saint Attracta killed a monster that was living in the Glen uh, the, uh, at a place called Lugna Pashta or the Hollow of the Beast. Um, pilgrimage takes place at the well on the last Sunday of July. Mass is now celebrated at the well on August 15th, so they've changed the date for that. And Saint Barbara, a, a companion of Saint Attracta, has a well dedicator which is situated nearby. This is another one of our many interesting wells. Um, this is Saint Farnan's Holy Well. And it's uh, between Dromore West and Eastkey, and it's in a steep-sided wooded ravine. Um, traditionally associated with St. Farinan, who um, is said to have been buried at the saint's bed there, which is a very large um, cairn just above the ravine. And a rough path leads up from the river along a steep slope and it follows the contours of a natural ledge to the well. And you can see a ledge here with all the coins on it. And this is said to be the saint's bed where the hermit saint is said to have slept. According to local tradition, the Pattern Day was held here again on, on Garland Sunday, the last Sunday in July. Um, the pilgrims would move from the saint's bed up to the well, which is the one in the um, corner there. And it's just a little bit of a spring that emerges from a ravine. And then they would go to the waterfall where they will collect a stone. Uh, this waterfall is also considered to be um, the ho a holy well, a pool in that, and then they climb to the top of the ravine and deposit a stone on the saint's bed. So it's a very interesting site with um, two holy wells and it's so diverse. This well here is Lady's Well in Ballygilgan and it's visited on August 15th. A mass has been said there again recently. Um, I had the pleasure of um, going there last year and you can see that the well itself is a circular well set in this concrete surround and then behind it there is this uh, beautiful altar to the Virgin Mary. Um, the school's folklore collection recorded in the 1930s the following story. There was once a large sycamore tree there that Our Lady appeared to a local man called Costello, who lived in a nearby house. People used to take pieces of this tree away with them, and the tree no longer exists. Another uh, account is as follows. It is the custom to light the candles while you are praying, I was told that those candles never quench, even if lighted on the coldest and wettest day. People leave with little tokens after them at the well, and you will often see a tree there covered in multicoloured ribbons. Even small pebbles are often left. Visitors to the well take some of the water with them when they, when they leave. This again is St. Colum Kills Holy Well and Junior, and so we've got um, a closer image of it here. So you can see the little stones around is covered in in seaweed. Um, the water is fresh water. It bubbles up from a uh, spring in the seabed. And this in itself is miraculous. This well is still visited on the 9th of June where pilgrims perform rounding rituals in bare feet around the well and drink from the spring water. It's said that the well water can cure cancer. Then we have a second well which is also associated with St. Column Kill. And the tradition is that people visit this well after visiting the well at the seashore. And this well is slightly different. It's set in um, a concrete surround and there's a spring emanating from it. And the water can be drank from this well using this tap and the cup. So it's quite convenient. 
This well is associated with um, a cure for arthritis. And just going to the last few of our wells here, this is St. Finian's Holy Well in O'Connery. It was dry when I visited it, but the well water there is said to be have um, exceptional curative properties. And during the survey, uh, we were informed that a baby was cured here of a life-threatening um, ailment. You can see the uh, the altar here with some uh, with the Celtic cross on the top, and the different uh, stones that are left behind by pilgrims. This is visited. Uh, still very much visited on the 15th of August, where a procession is led from the local church to the Holy Well. So this is the final well. This is St. Connell's Holy Well at Loch Gill, and it's situated in Tupper Connell Bay. And it's a very beautiful, natural setting here, and it's a lovely one to visit. Um, according to the information that we gathered, this well has been incorrectly attributed to St. Bridget, when in fact it's a, it's well um, attributed to St. Connell. And if it's visited on June 2nd, it said that the island in the bay, St. Connell's Island, was also visited as part of the pilgrimage. The well consists of a natural spring, which has a roughly rectangular dry stone wall around it, and the base of the well is covered with sand and gravel. And from it, the, the water bubbles up, and it's quite interesting to see that happening. There are occasional rags still around the well. Um, the tradition is that it was um, a fertility well, and so the custom was to walk barefoot around the three trees that grow around the well, the elm, the yew and the oak. And by doing so, you would drink the water from the stream, uh, which is, uh, flows out from the well. And this was thought to bring fertility. It's also known as a wishing well. And some people just go and drink the water, tie a rag to the yew tree and make a wish. So we collected quite a lot of information, including a beautiful poem about this well. Um, and we thank everyone for all their contributions. The survey of holy wells was conducted as part of the Sligo Community Archaeology Project. It's an initiative of the Sligo Heritage Forum and is an action of the County Sligo Heritage Plan 2016 to 2020. It has been funded um, by Sligo County Council in partnership with the Heritage Council. And I've been delighted to be part of the project, uh, particularly in terms of collecting the holy information about holy wells. And I hope to uh, continue doing that. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity today to speak about Sligo's many interesting and diverse holy wells.